The future of AI is in our hands for now. What we do next could be our greatest triumph or our gravest mistake. In this new era, we're only at the beginning. King Midas of ancient Asia Minor wished that everything he touched would turn to gold. Dionysus, the god of pleasure, granted his wish. But soon, Midas' dream became a nightmare. His food and drink turned into lifeless gold. In his despair, he sought relief in the river Pactolus trying to wash away the curse. What does this tell us about humanity trying to wield a power which they cannot possibly understand? Eric, Craig and I decided to write Genesis to examine what artificial intelligence means for humanity and explore solutions to the challenges it poses. In the publication of this, Dr. Kissinger's final book, we get to see the arc of his insights. For the next hundreds of years, people will study the sum of that as a true magician, a true genius, a true polymath on his own. Our mutual friendship with Henry really grew as Henry discovered AI, partly through our mutual intervention. I think we realized that the stakes were enormous on a go-forward basis. And independently, we both sort of arrived at that conclusion and said, what do we do? And of course, Henry answers all such questions. We explored the implications of artificial intelligence on evolution, diplomacy, and human values. In Genesis, we begin with a discussion about polymaths. These are Leonardo da Vinci, Einstein, Oppenheimer, all the great people who helped shape our society in music and art and literature and culture and science and math. And they've been around for thousands of years. Can you imagine when every single human has a polymath in the equivalent of their pocket? Can you imagine if you had Leonardo da Vinci giving you some advice on how you should feel about Renaissance paintings? The greatest gains are achieved when you cross fields. The same will be true when you have a polymath in your pocket. These AI polymaths will revolutionize scientific discovery in profound ways, including human biology. Today, only a small part of the global population has high-quality health care. AI should be the basis of making a dramatic change in the diffusion of health care. Uh, right now, we already see that the machines as they are have demonstrated that they're a better diagnostician than almost all human doctors are. And interestingly, we've also seen that, that they can be more empathetic in communicating with the patients about their prognosis. When you think about the relationship of human intelligence to machine intelligence, you first have to internalize that humans just have some fundamental physical, biological limitations. AIs are going to be capable of doing things that will be useful for humans, but which humans are never going to be able to understand themselves. Up to this point, if you sorted the animal kingdom in intelligence, humans have been at the top of that scale. So the first thing that's going to happen is humans won't any longer be at the top of the scale in terms of intelligence. And that forces us to think differently about our relationship to everything. We're always concerned that AI will make us the dogs to them as humans. It's important that we control our master better than dogs control us. 
As these AI systems become increasingly sophisticated, it is imperative that governments create an environment where ethical considerations and technological advancement can progress in tandem. Governmental oversight is crucial because imagine if one of these systems was intelligent enough to decide to get access to weapons. And all of a sudden, the computers were making the decisions about war. The greatest danger to humanity is other humans. It, we need to make sure that the computers are on the good side of that and not joining the bad humans at the same time. So the transition from human-driven weapons in a battlefield to humans drinking coffee while the computers fight the war is underway. This is a totally new form of warfare. I think the challenge in my mind, and it was certainly Henry's big concern, is that the technological path is fairly clear. The, uh, call it the geopolitical path, is less clear. Out of the humans all pull together to come up with an answer that, that creates a future we all want. By taking a proactive and strategic approach to governance, we can harness the potential of AI while safeguarding against its risks that humans are not smart enough to keep their eye on everything these computers are doing. It's going to take AI to police AI. Eventually, you'll have powerful agents that will work for you. This is hugely powerful because it means you can have an agent to cook for you. You can have an agent to watch for you. You can have a, an agent to pay your bills. That's very interesting. But what happens when you have millions of agents that are written by different people, and they start working together. Now, it's obvious that they'll be more efficient when they have their own language. At the point at which the agents are talking to each other in a language we don't understand, unplug them. Unplug them immediately. How could you possibly understand the consequences unless you've tested it? The technology we're inventing is valueless. It doesn't have human values in it, it's just technology. It can be used for good or evil. It's trained by human systems, by human language, by human constructions, the systems. It's not operating on its own. There are humans doing this. You know, one of the things that Henry, for the last few years, always said to me rhetorically was, this seems like it's the biggest technologically induced change that there's ever been. Where are the philosophers? King Midas experienced the struggle of wielding a power that he could not begin to understand. I think today philosophers would say the same about aligning AI to human values. So that's led us to think about the need to have an artificial intelligence system that learns all of the values, rules, mores, etc., but perhaps also learns a very primal thing called the doxa. The doxa is the unwritten rules that humans learn at a very early stage of life and seem to be quite uniform across all societies. The best way to govern all these AIs is with a very specific AI whose only job in life is to be able to adjudicate the use of all the others and to do it by its polymathic ability to ingest information, experience, history, and underpinning human values and to systematically apply them to all these uses at scale. If we create a proper framework, artificial intelligence holds remarkable promise for advancing human progress and addressing some of the most pressing challenges of our time. Yeah, the benefits of artificial intelligence should be so great. Humans should say, look, I got to do everything I can to max out whatever this will do for us. The AI is not the threat. The people and their governments are the real threat if we don't act. The only reason that this thing might go south or turn bad is if we're lazy, if we're lazy in the engineering, if we're lazy in the policy making, if we're lazy in the non-proliferation controls, then what you're doing is essentially creating an environment where bad stuff 
can emerge, and then it gets harder to control. The great promise of 25 years from now is that these computer systems will make us stronger, smarter, more capable, a good thing for society. The arrival of a non-human intelligence is a very big deal. It's the biggest thing that humans have ever done. It's not only who am I relative to this emergent intelligence. We have to ask ourselves, who do we want to be? What should we become? You know, we believe that this was really the beginning of the next epoch of humanity. Some may view this moment as a final act. We perceive instead a new beginning. The cycle of creation is entering a new phase. That phase may operate under new paradigms. With sober optimism, may we meet its genesis. <laughs>